Now, earlier this year, you may well remember that I competed in the Norseman Extreme Triathlon. Now, personally, I knew this was going to be a pretty epic day out, given that it is one of the toughest events in the world, and you definitely want to see it and see me suffering. So given that I was going to be on the bike for a good five to six hours, I knew that I needed to attach a GoPro to my bike in order to capture everything I could. Now, obviously, I could just attach that GoPro using a standard GoPro mount onto my aero bars, but I'm pretty picky. I like my cockpit nice and clean and I've already got my bike computer on there. So I came up with the idea of designing a new computer mount with the GoPro attachment underneath. Now this is means that I'm gonna to have to have a custom design for me for this setup with a computer and a GoPro mount underneath, all designed for my bars and how I've got them angled. Now go back a number of years, this would be totally feasible cost a fortune and just not be possible. But now, with thanks to 3D printing, I was just able to contact Martin from Racewear, get this basically brought to life, and within a handful of days, he'd made this for me. And I used this in Norseman to capture this footage on screen right now. Now, in addition to this, 3D printing has totally revolutionized cycling. In fact, sport in general. So today, I thought we'd head along to see Martin at Racewear and find out a little bit more about it. Okay, we've just arrived in Newbury, home to Raceway. Before we head on in to meet Martin, let me just get you up to speed with exactly what 3D printing is. Now, traditionally, if you wanted a part or a product made, then a company would have to make molds and tools for each of the individual parts for that product. Now, that obviously takes time, but also costs them quite a lot of money. So they want to recoup those costs. So they want to make sure that that product is needed, it's desirable, and it can be mass produced to sell and make back those costs. That's not going to bode too well for my custom mount that's been designed for me, for my needs and for my setup on my bike. But that is where 3D printing does come in. Now, back in 1986, there's actually a chap called Chuck Hull who came up with the idea of layering inks on top of each other to create a three-dimensional model, 3D printing. Now, the processes, the materials have changed somewhat since 1986. The fundamentals remain the same. The key being that we don't need these tools or these molds to create the products. So this has made way for small runs of products, maybe even a one-off product or a prototype such as my mount. So let's head on in to see how it's made. Hi Martin. Now Martin is the founder of Racewear Components and we've actually, well we haven't come into Racewear, we've actually gone next door to 3T AM. So talk us through why we're in the premises next door to Racewear. So 3T AM are one of the world's leading um, additive manufacturing bureaus. They've been around for 20 years now and are really at the forefront of their technology. So it's not by chance that my office is next door. These guys, for me, were the main people to come to for producing the components. And the relationship works really well. Being so close geographically means I can get the parts quicker as well. Any problems, they're right next door to me. So it works very, very well having them as my provider. Yeah, and it's these machines behind us that you're utilizing and we're here to talk about today. That's correct, yeah. So all these machines here are uh, 3D printing machines building in nylon material. And the one behind me is actually running one of your components at the moment. Cool, and so how do they actually work? So what is the process involved? So um, it's a layer-based process and um, these industrial printers are very different to the home ones in as much as they're done by um, heat and lasers and you have a, a, a bed of loose nylon powder and the laser is used to locally melt the 2D contour of the component. Then that component is dropped down by 0.12 millimeters of a layer, uh, uh, layers in this process. Um, not always 0.12, but in this case it is. And then new powder is 
drawn across the top and then another layer is printed and it's repeated until you get the component built. And you can do just small runs on here, I guess, so it's yeah, one you can. product. Yeah, you can do one off, you can do a hundred off. Um, generally, you, you tend to do a larger run because it's economically not very viable to just a one-off part, but you could do a one-off part. So say, for instance, like we were going in the wind tunnel, we were doing some aerodynamic testing, yeah. you could literally make a few iterations, hop back in, redesign, change it. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Yeah, so there's no tooling and, and there's no kind of upfront costs for a one-off as opposed to a, a ten-off. So, yeah, you can do various iterations and, and they'll be the same type of price each time. Yeah, which is amazing because I guess traditionally you'd be kind of waiting for months, maybe years, yeah. for tooling. Yeah. Then the production model where so you can just turn it around quickly. Exactly. But not just prototypes. These are finished products that you can use going to world Pro Tour teams exactly. and they are literally using them in yeah. the likes of Paris-Roubaix, which is like the harshest environment, I guess. It is, yeah. And, and generally, the feedback is very good. So, yeah, we like to try and make sure that our parts are functioning right at that top level. So whilst we leave the machines to do their thing, we're going to head back over to Martin's office to find out a little bit more about the initial stages to the 3D printing process. So on the screen behind, we have the, um, the, the CAD model um, for the mount that we were looking at on your bike. And that's the start of the process. The, the CAD design is the first place. After you've done the your CAD modeling, that will be sent to a 3D printing bureau, such as 3TAM, and they would then um, prep that ready for build. So it would be um, put onto a, a theoretical um, build platform, and it'd also be some uh, scaling applied for shrinkage, and then that scaled file would be sliced into the layers and sent as a, a packet of data to the machine ready for printing. With other products? Exactly, around, yeah. So. so you would ready print something like that and it would be with a, a vast array of other products, probably from other customers, to fill the machine. Or iterations, I guess. Or iterations, yeah, yeah or a combination. Yeah, brilliant. Um, and I'm, I'm actually interested sort of the materials that you're using here because this is, I mean, this is a, a tough material. And um, what is it? So that's a basically a nylon 12 and the properties for nylon 12 are really good for most of the bike parts that we do and uh, it lends itself very well it's a, it's quite a flexible material so you can make nice hinged parts for going around bars it's fairly soft so it shouldn't damage any of your bars you shouldn't scratch them and it also shouldn't damage any of the computers you're putting on there so if anything does get damaged it's likely to be the the, the cheap amount rather than the expensive computer. We can offer other, other nylons and also um, titanium, such as this piece, which is a printed titanium chain catcher. The downside with the titanium is, is still vastly expensive, but the options are always there. Great, and um, I mean, this is not quite a finished product. There's a couple more stages after these come out from the 3D printer, right? That's right, yeah. So um, that one's a, a semi-finished project, but you still have to put in some um, stainless bolts and some um, brass threaded inserts to clamp it all together. Cool, and a bit of colouring if so. Yeah, a bit of colouring. That one's obviously black, but we can do most colours and we can also do custom um, paint as well to a, a, an exact Pantone or Al reference. Fantastic. And just lastly, I mean, how did you get into all of this? What was the starting point? So for me, um, I've always been a keen cyclist and my TT bike I'd spent hours making look as nice as, and sleek as possible but the SRM mount was, was horrendous. They just, nobody made one for an uh, oval shaped bar. So, oh, yeah. this is it here, right? Exactly, that's the one there. So I used some CAD and and um, got one 3D printed. It went almost viral really on uh, on the Weight Weenies forum. And suddenly I found hundreds of people wanting them almost overnight. So it went from one little SRM mount to almost a business. Brilliant, well on that note, should we go and see how it's getting on? Certainly. Okay, Martin, so we've got the product out. I mean, this doesn't look quite like the finished product, so it's got some powder around it. What's going on here? Yeah, that's right. So when the part is built, um, it's built with, with powder all around it. So um, when it comes out of the machine, um, you have kind of this, this loose debris of powder, which is 
collected from, uh, from the, the printing process, we do the layer by layer stages. And once you've removed it from the machine, you then have to uh, blast this. Blast it with um, air and a light media just to remove the powder, but making sure you don't damage the part at the same time, no discoloration, no burning. And then effectively that part is then finished for, for, for all intents and purposes. But if you want to enhance the finish or make it smoother and get rid of some of the build lines, which you'll see, then you can put it through a, a secondary process from a vibratory finishing process to give that nice smooth um, feel to it. Brilliant. Well, we best go pop it in there then. Certainly. So here it is, the finished 3D printed product, which I'm obviously super grateful and fortunate to have had made for myself. But don't just assume that this kind of thing is only open to the elite or the super wealthy out there, because this is becoming more and more readily available. In fact, just going through one of the triathlon transitions last year, I saw tons of this kind of thing made for both pros and age groupers. So really cool. I hope you have enjoyed today's video. It's been really interesting. Perhaps there's scope for a GTN 3D printing project in the future. Who knows? If you've got any ideas, drop that in the comment section below. If you've enjoyed today's video, hit the thumbs up button. If you'd like to see more from GTN, just click on the globe and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to see our Kona tech tour, if tech is your kind of thing, you can see that by clicking just down here. If you'd like to see our Roth transition tour, you can see that by clicking just down here.